Hello everybody, Luke Schulte, Beetle Grounds from X Hybrids. Now that 2024 is complete, what faith or what stock can we put in the results that we saw from the past growing season, considering the weather extremes that we had, both heat or more notably drought? However, it's years like this past that I think we can learn a great deal, specifically around stress tolerance as well as nutrient uptake. Given that the harvest was completed earlier than normal, by now many have probably received a 2024 PFR book. If you haven't, please give us a call will get you one. However, there is one study that you will not find within that PFR guide. And it's a study that's a first year study specific to Ohio looking at nitrogen rates relative to sulfur because we know those two nutrients tend to go hand in hand. So now let's dive into the first year results. So in the first year of this study, we utilized four different hybrids consisting of the three major breeding platforms that are out there today. Corteva, Bayer, as well as Syngen. And the first two treatments each had 190 pound of nitrogen applied in, in the manner in which in our PFR research we found to be the most efficient. 60 pounds with the planter, balance at V3 or an early side dress. First treatment was nitrogen alone. The second treatment was nitrogen plus sulfur at two different timings, both with the planter and then the majority was actually applied with that side dress application. And then the last two treatments, we simply added 30 pounds of nitrogen to each of those two treatments above. 220 alone and 220 pound of nitrogen plus that 36 pounds of sulfur. Now here's a picture that was taken about six weeks after planting. You can see by the left hand, upper left hand corner. This plot was planted at the end of April, side dressed third week of May. And then this picture was taken about two weeks after side dressing. So by now, obviously the, the plant root system has taken up that, that two by two starter of nitrogen alone or nitrogen plus sulfur. And it's all starting to get into those side dress nutrients as well. But it was it's unmistakable, obviously, how the sulfur treatments are not only much greener and lusher, but it also really designates or denotes just how nitrogen and sulfur tend to work uh, uh, hand in hand. You can see by between those red lines, those are the two treatments are the same two hybrids, a Sagena as well as a bear based uh, hybrid at 220 pounds of nitrogen, just without sulfur on the left and with sulfur on the right. And obviously it's much greener in color, but it's obviously a fuller plant as well. You can see how just having more nitrogen doesn't create the photosynthate, but the nitrogen plus sulfur is creating a plant that not only has more chlorophyll, but the additional nitrogen is creating a, a plant that's producing more photosynthate and an even bigger plant. You can see that by the net effect of not only the crop height, but the bigger leaves and the more shade that you can see on the ground with the sulfur treatment ju versus just nitrogen alone. Now, what did the data tell us? The data would simply say by adding more nitrogen didn't necessarily provide us much of a higher return on investment. We got a five bushel bump, but we spent most of that in that additional 30 pounds of nitrogen. But what was really interesting is the significant responses we've seen with the addition of sulfur. You can see adding 36 pounds of sulfur to 190 pounds of nitrogen gave us a 16 to 17 bushel yield bump. And then when we went up to the 220 pound rate, we got an additional, not an additional, I should say, but we got a 12 bushel bump versus nitrogen alone. Couple things that I take from that study. One, just simply adding nitrogen didn't provide us the net return we were looking for, but also, we don't see much of a yield difference between those 36 pounds of sulfur treatments, whether it be at 190 or 220 pounds of nitrogen. To me, that would exemplify that perhaps we didn't go high enough uh, to a high enough rate of sulfur. Maybe nitrogen wasn't the limiting factor. Sure, it would appear it wasn't, but perhaps we could have got an additional benefit had we gone to higher sulfur rates. So there's also some other additional benefits I think it's important that we take into mind uh, with sulfur uh, is especially with higher rates of sulfur, like 30 pounds and greater. This past season, we certainly had plenty of times to observe drought uh, stress, but I saw where guys used 30 pounds or maybe even greater than 30 pounds, their corn didn't seem to roll as, not only as quickly into that dry stretch, but also they seemed to stay relaxed deeper into the day. Eventually they still did roll. Probably one of the things that uh, we can prove not only anecdotally, but we can also see this in data is, the accessibility of sulfur early between that V3, V7, and particularly when we have anaerobic conditions, most notably in our clay soils, the accessibility of sulfur, in some cases two by two, certainly leads to less premature plant death. We've seen uh, in our sulfur timing studies up until this point, no single application has netted a uh, more consistent ROI than some nitrogen, or excuse me, some sulfur in that two by two application. The third bullet point is another case of anecdotal evidence. 
I can't prove this with data, but one thing that I've seen is particularly tar spot, but any leaf disease where growers, where farmers are utilizing 30 or maybe even more sulfur, 30 pounds of sulfur or more, plant leaf diseases seem to be uh, delayed. Certainly th diseases like tar spot seem to come in yet, but they don't seem to come in until later growth stages when sometimes it's even debatable whether we treat or retreat for. And then another case of anecdotal evidence in 2024, we didn't have much vomitoxin, but in 2023, asking a number of growers that are using, I would say, much higher rates of sulfur, like 40, 45 pounds of sulfur, didn't seem to have the vomitoxin issues uh, that others did with the same hybrids. We're going to expound upon that in a study this coming growing season, but there seems to be some anecdotal evidence that it can be beneficial to vomitoxin. And then North Dakota State University proved this a number of years ago that, that sulfur, uh, along with our UAN or urea applications, helps to reduce the effects. And, and reduce that nitrogen volatility that can occur, especially with our surface applications. So in summary, it's first year of the study. We're going to further evaluate this. We're going to add some additional treatments with higher rates of sulfur. But we have to remember, nitrogen and sulfur go hand in hand. Just simply adding more nitrogen isn't going to necessarily give us that ROI we're desiring. And simply adding sulfur is in all likely probably not going to produce us the response that we're looking for if we're insufficient on nitrogen alone. Lastly, if you like this type of information, this is just one segment of what we learned throughout PFR this past year. Uh, in the first two weeks of January, we're going to host a number of different, what we call our PFR Insight meetings, to not only reflect back what we learned from 2024's research, but also what did the weather indicate and what are some of those management practices that tended to rise to the top to negate stress and some of those findings. So you can see by the screen in front of you, we're going to host quite a few different meetings, both at lunch, dinner, even a breakfast meeting as well. So if you can make it, we'd love to have you. If you can make the time, there's a QR code in front of you to RSVP. That just gives us a better, uh, obviously, understanding of, of how many to expect so that we're, we're prepared, most importantly, for food. But if you forget to RSVP, don't worry about it. Just come along anyway. You don't have to be a Bex customer. We would love to have you. With that said, we appreciate you tuning in. Have a Merry Christmas.